Hello everyone! Today in front of us we have a beautiful Junghans uh, like a not really a mantelpiece clock but just like a yeah not really a big clock small clock standing clock put it on like a dresser table metal piece if you want um so yeah picked this up uh, at a client's place last week and um yeah decided to just um dive dive into it would you um so I think this one has one mainspring that was like catching but slipping. I think this one was yeah. So somewhere like it's grabbing but not completely. And this one is fully wound, I suppose, yes. Um so yeah, somewhere like at this hook of the mainspring. Um yeah, something is going wrong there. We have here our pendulum, which is kind of like, it's made to look like a, a mercury compensation pendulum, but it's not, because yeah, those are not vials, just pieces of metal. Um, it is not even a compensation pendulum, um, because it is just, like, you can see on the middle sh uh, piece here, it's basically like the steel, and then they put like a tin brass rod over it, um, same here, um, I can see it here, so I assume, it's pretty safe to assume it's going to be the same here, um, so yeah, so just, yeah, they made a, a nice looking, um, ornament of it, and then if we look underneath, there you have the big Yunghan star, um, there's also Yunghan logo on the dial, um, so yeah, um, time to dig into it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure because there's two screws here, there's two screws here. I'm not sure if I need to undo these. Definitely need to undo these because I can kind of see um, the movement being attached under there. Um, so I need to get to that first. So uh, let's get the screwdriver. And I'll first probably should remove the uh, hand first. So it's a bit odd. So there's like this this piece in front of it, which is like a. It almost looks like a functional piece, but pretty sure it does not have a function. No, oh, it can't help it. Oh yeah, expect say it's in there good, but eventually it came out. Where did that go? It is. You can see it's pretty bent, almost as if it's like. Yeah, uh, almost as if it was made to put tension in there. Uh, probably not much. You can see there's a bit of like wear on there. Now, hands are removed. So let's get on with the rest. Who oh did the screws are loose? I could just pull that one out. A bit more stuck. Well, everybody been a little worried. Some work throughout the years on the movement. <laughs> uh, as you can see, we have like multiple different screws, ones missing. Pretty sure that wasn't from factory out. Let's 
this is something odd, but uh, probably doesn't show up on camera. Also note that like it hasn't, it doesn't have mainspring barrels, so its construction is actually more like a, an alarm clock. In and we got the movement out. Not bad. So, as you can see, we have a, like an older style suspension spring. Really like how sturdy, like all the like bent metal rods are. Like even the pendulum leader is really like thick. It's, much much different than from like cuckoo's clocks and all that stuff. Um, this one is also oh, really like a big big brass hammer there. Uh, we have lantern pinions, and then we have our striking mechanism with like the partition disc integrated into it. Um, but we like the levers, they're like nice. Let, let's go uh, into um, a close up of the movement um, so I can show it a bit more decent. So here we have the movement, a bit of a close up. Again, you can understand, nice up bridge for your answer. Um, let's see, a bit of play in there, nothing to worry about. Oh, that's this fine tune. Never picks up, but you can see the axle of the answer jump. So that's some plane there. Overall, there is some play in, um, in the axles, but nothing that worries me too much. Oh yeah, Antra will definitely need some rebushing. You can probably see that jumping around behind the pendulum lead leader. Yeah, that's definitely too much. <laughs> uh, definitely for Antra, where like escapement, where like yeah, tolerances are very critical. And then as for the the spring that was slipping. You can see that from over the years, normally you have a hook like this. And you can see that from over the years, that hook has just gone flat. And the only thing that's keeping the mainspring stuck at the start is like this little ledge. Like this little bend. So it's it's being kept behind here. And then, um, yeah, until the mainspring... Because if you wind the mainspring, it contracts, and it probably pulls itself in enough that like this unhooks, like I did just now, and then you can see it comes here against the axle in the middle, and then if you continue to turn, it's probably catching back on here until, yeah, inevitably, yeah, it all happens again. Um. Pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure that you can get this from like constantly uh, like winding it up till the end and trying to because as like a normal hook in a main barrel like in the main barrel of a clock will not like escape but eventually um I don't know on this one it was riveted. But I can't see rivet on here. No. That's not riveted. So yeah, it was just a hook, uh, like in a normal um alarm clock. Um so yeah. Somebody tried to turn it, 
probably turn it continuously too far. And eventually that ended up slowly um, pulling it further and further until we are left with this. Um, as a matter of fact, let's just try my little theory out. Oh, I do not like this. Okay, so it's catching wherever. My hands are getting a bit greasy because this movement is covered in greasy. It catches. And then it means things starts to pull in on itself. And then, bam, it releases itself. So that's not causing the main problem. Um, like I said, entry, uh, entry wheel needs some addressing. Um, play white. Uh, and for the rest, well, yeah. Just a little maintenance. So, uh, let me see. Don't need to. Um, let me get. Um, although this is going to be annoying. Um, probably just. Does it turn? Yes. Does it? Uh, So what I'm doing now is that um, since basically the click spring is in between the partition disk and the wheel there, there's no decent way for me to use the lap down tool because that means that like I need to disengage it and be really careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to it like this and uh, I'll get back to you when it is done unwinding itself but I gotta say that hammer is putting out a mighty punch in such a way that um, yeah we we'll need to keep an eye on it but yeah see you when it's not when there's no power left on the mainspring so now with the two um, mainsprings released of tension, um, time to disassemble it. Hmm, I need to notice some all of this like this spring kind of thing. That uh, wasn't from the factory, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, disassemble is pretty straightforward. Um, might already uh, going to get the I don't want to mangle the nuts. Some are tighter than others. Looks like this one got cross threaded at one point. There we go.
And the last one. No, let's see. Okay, there's still some, uh, a little bit of power left. And same for there. But everything stayed more or less in place. Brown grease, where it's like grease and dust combined. Absolutely, look at he's the string around that holding. Um, it's pretty crooked, so I might need to straighten that too. Um, so I'm already kind of straightened that. Um, so I'm going to clean all this and then um, see you back for assembly. And a bit of a repair too.